The sand hill crane is a large and magnificent bird that is found in the wetlands in the central United States. A bird watcher's delight at one point, the sand hill crane populations had dwindled so low they were near extinction. They have made quite the comeback and have adapted to urban areas. I took this footage near my neighborhood and it just tickled me, them just strolling down the sidewalk. These fun signs can be found in Madison area neighborhoods near lakes and marshlands. Sandhill cranes live in wetland areas, such as marshes, shallow waterways, and lakes. They are typically seen walking along the water's edge or standing in shallow ponds. They are very social birds and can be found in large groups. They are also known for their loud calls, which can be heard from a great distance. When you see a large bird flying, you can identify a sandhill crane if the neck is outstretched and the downward flap of the wings is followed by a quick upstroke. They migrate up and down the Mississippi flyway. They are pretty formable looking birds, quite tall with a wingspan up to seven feet, and they are about four feet tall. Ironically, they only weigh between eight and 11 pounds. <clears throat> Sandhill cranes and great herons are often confused. They both live in marshlands, although the sandhill is a tad bigger. They also have red feathers on their head. The great blue heron has a visible black eye stripe and black feathers on its head. Herons will also roost in trees, where sandhills do not. Another big difference is the heron tucks in its neck when flying and has more even wing strokes. This one is a gray heron. I'm excited to announce my new book is out. Volume two in the Wildlife Rehabilitation series deals with diseases and parasites. Links to my book can be found in the description. I would also greatly appreciate if you would give this video a thumbs up. That really helps me to grow the channel and do more videos on wildlife and organic gardening. These birds are best known for their graceful dance, which they perform during courtship rituals and their very vocal conversations. It has been compared to the marionette puppets frolicking up and down on strings. During this elaborate dance, the pair is very vocal. The male utters a high-pitched note, followed quickly by the female's two-note answer. They can be heard two miles away. Cranes are monogamous and select a mate when they are approximately four years old. If not killed by a hunter or a predator, they will spend the next 25 to 30 years with the same mate. Here is a couple nest building. The parents build mounded nests on the ground in grassy areas next to wetlands. The nests are not very visible because they blend in with the sand and grasses. The female lays two to three eggs and both parents hatch them and feed them until they are mature. In Wisconsin, this is typically in mid-May. The chicks hatch after 30 days and have yellow and brown feathers. They are pre precocial, which means they are born with feathers, unlike songbirds who are born naked. Crane chicks grow fast, sometimes an inch a day in summer. After about two months, the young cranes can fly and leave the nest. Crane families migrate south together. Young birds that have outgrown their parents hang out together in a group called a bachelor flock. Northern states like Minnesota and Wisconsin serve as breeding grounds from March to November. Florida and the Gulf states provide a winter retreat. Several other states enjoy them as they travel the Mississippi flyway when migrating. Sandhill cranes primarily eat plants, aquatic tubers, worms, grasshoppers, snails, and frogs. 
They will also eat insects and other small mammals when the opportunity arises. They can be a problem to farmers because they will sometimes eat seeds and seedlings, especially corn plants. Crane researchers are developing ways to make corn seeds taste bad so that the cranes do not eat corn seeds from the field. On the flip side, they are beneficial by eating many harmful insects. Aldo Leopold was a famous environmentalist in the early 1900s who worked to conserve sandhill cranes. The red arrow is pointing to him. This picture shows the founding members of the Wilderness Society. The yellow arrow points to the only woman in the group, Lorette Collier. I am sad that I haven't been able to find out any more about her, but I love that she's wearing men's clothes here in 1946. I have a blog article with more information that I will link in the comments. We have so many cool bird species. Check out my video on wild turkeys next or my playlist on owls. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful sunny day.